the first question is, how do you hope Armor Bullock will shape new second lieutenants for their first unit? Well, I would tell you that Ar Armor Bullock ha has a couple of outcomes that are that are part of what what we expect out of an armor officer. Uh, we're going to take cadets like yourself and like other cadets, uh, and they will get the technical expertise that is required to be an armor officer. They will learn the physical platforms, uh, the tanks, uh, they'll get on Bradleys, they'll get on strikers, so they'll learn uh, mounted maneuver, uh, and so they will get that as, as an outcome. Uh, the other outcome that they're going to get out of that course is to be agile, adaptive, and be able to function in not only austere environments, but ambiguous environments where they don't necessarily have all the answers. And so what Bullock will give them is a base to start from. They'll give them a base of understanding that allows them to apply that knowledge, the doctrinal knowledge, uh, the understanding, the tactics, the techniques, the procedures that they can then apply to real world problems uh, that they see out around the force. So at the end of the day, uh, we want them to be agile, adaptive, technically competent, and tactically competent, uh, and prepared to assume the role as that platoon leader in that first organization. Lieutenants struggle at? Obviously the technical competence, you know, is, is new. It's something that is being introduced. Uh, we are a very technologically complex army. Uh, in both of our weapon systems, uh, the physical vehicles, also in our simulation systems. Uh, so there is a technical side you know, that they have to understand and, and they have to work their way through uh, making sure that they can employ that weapon system uh, on the battlefield. So that's, that's probably number one. Uh, the second thing is they have to learn to move at a speed that they're not used to moving in. Uh, we go through uh, our training. Our training is typically dismounted, and that is, you know, dismounted land nav that's moving at three to five k's an hour, you know, on a good day, typically about one k an hour, uh, and you're taking in all of the terrain and every bump, every hill, every road, every culvert uh, that you're paying attention to when you're moving at that speed. Uh, then you have to take that and exponentially expanded, where you've got now uh, a tank that is moving cross country at, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. And you're leading an organization that can cover uh, 40 kilometers in, you know, a very short amount of time. And so being able to understand how you fit into something that large, and then being able to move from, you know, your four by four square map, you know, to a map board where you're covering kilometers you know, at a time versus meters at a time. Uh, what advice would you give to your second lieutenant self? What advice would I give to me? Be confident that you know what you're doing. Be confident in the training that you got. Be competent and sure of yourself stepping into whatever that situation is. Um, I think would probably be the, the first thing I would tell myself because your training works. And as you go through that, you'll be faced with things that you don't know and fall back on common sense and the training that you have and trust your people. And if you, trust, if you do those three things, you'll be successful. Lieutenant, what was, your, uh, what was the highlight of being a lieutenant for you? Oh, I, did, I, I had a great time. I was fortunate to come in the Army at a, at a really, really good time. Uh, I came in in 1988. Uh, we still had 18 divisions in the Army. Uh, there was, it was a larger Army. Uh, I'll give you a couple of highlights. Uh, probably first and foremost, uh, I was able to go on a full reforger exercise uh, as a platoon leader. Uh, I was able to go from Fort Hood, Texas uh, to Belgium and draw vehicles out of a, uh, a POMCA site, a uh, vehicle storage site, uh, load those vehicles on a, on a train, take them down into Germany, and then spend two weeks maneuvering you know, in Germany as a platoon leader. Uh, and that truly has set me up you know, for success all the way through. Uh, and everything that I've done since 
you know, I can kind of relate back to some portion of either the deployment, the prep for the deployment, the deployment, the drawing of vehicles, uh, the actual execution of that maneuver, and understanding, again, it goes back to what I talked about with the scale of what you're going to be asked to do. And I was a scout platoon leader and working in a very ambiguous environment, working on a large scale, moving, you know, armored vehicles uh, in, a, in a foreign country, you know, albeit in a very permissive environment, uh, but still in a foreign country. So that was probably uh, one of the highlights. Uh, the second highlight I would touch on is fast forward uh, about eight months uh, and Saddam Hussein evaded Kuwait and I deployed uh, as a scout platoon leader uh, to Desert Storm and you know just the entire experience of, of being in Desert Storm uh, going through the buildup, uh, seeing things happen uh, you know I, I have witnessed a, a full division artillery raid where the, every artillery tube and rocket launcher in the 1st Cav Division pulled up behind our screen line and fired into Iraq. Amazing, you know, experience as a, as a young lieutenant. So those are probably the two that I would point out. And our last question is, what uh, book would you recommend for uh, new lieutenants to read? Yeah, there's one, and uh, as, as we said when we started out here, I have a, a second lieutenant's son. And uh, so the book that I give uh, to everybody is called The Defense of Hill, Hill 781. Uh, and it's a phenomenal book. Uh, it is one of those iterative, iterative books that takes a scenario and then you walk your way through the scenario and you learn through the course of uh, the individual uh, that is in, in the book. Um, it's set at the National Training Center uh, at Fort Irwin, California. And when you get to the end, it is very clear that every branch Every individual, every specialty in the Army is required to make this big machine work. And so, you know, I grew up as a cavalryman, and we'd like to believe that we're, you know, the only ones out on the battlefield. But the truth of the matter is that it takes everybody, you know, in order to make that work. And so the Defense 